head. Might still be stuck inside if we haven't been attacked. This is the pool that thing came from. The parasite now writhing behind your eye. Its casing crumbles beneath your hands, sloshing volatile brine as it collapses. to save us from this place. From this place you'll free us. Please. Before they return. They return. Uh. A newborn. Born new from this husk. you're talking to an intellect devourer, a minion of the mind flares who abducted you. Notice edema, a swelling of the brain causing pressure where it strains against the shell of the skull. Please, before they return! They return. from the skull, but you notice an opportunity. You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient, should it prove a threat. Listening. Something behind your eyes seizes in recognition. We must go to the helm! At the helm, we are needed. The brain tenses, as though querying an unseen advisor. Do you not hear it? We will not survive here. We are needed to navigate. We are needed to leave this realm. A gift. A gift. 
to make you as we are. Soon you will be so beautiful, so powerful. We are going to the helm! My friend and I are going to the helm. Abomination. This is your end. Your head throbs and your skin tingles. Visions rush past. A dragon's wing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Oh! My head! What is this? Squaw, you are no thrall. Flakith blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. Imps block the path forward. You will assist me in destroying them. We must reach the helm before we transform. We carry Mind Flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be Geich, Mind Flayers. can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. Who am I? Your only chance of survival. And you mine, though it pains me to say it. It is where we might gain control of the Ga'ath, the ship. Once in command, we will deal with our gay captain. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. As for that thing, it will remain tame as long as it believes we are thralls. It may be of use in the fight to come. Time for stragglers. Wait! That can't be. There has to be another way. Please! It cannot be helped. Come. Safe if she stays. Safe if we go. A dazed woman is trapped inside the pod. She doesn't notice you.
Use the nerves of the transponder. We must escape now. Do it. We will deal with the Geich after we escape. Connect the nerves. Nerves. We will connect them. Another step or I'll... Wait. It's you. You're the one who tried to free me on the ship. At least you made the effort. Suddenly, you see what she sees. Feel what she feels. Confusion, resolve, and a hint of gratitude. Ah! Did you feel that? You've got the same thing I do. In your head. The same. It must be that tadpole they put in our eyes. I assume that's what caused our minds to... cross. These things are going to consume us from the inside and turn us into mind flayers. You and I need a healer. Finding one won't be easy in this wilderness. We'll need supplies. I'm hoping something of use might be behind this door. But I've barely made a dent in it so far. Under a head. I'm going to see what's at the top of this cliff. Hopefully there's no more of these creatures along the way. No, unless you count these monsters. You're the friendliest face so far.
gorgeous company for our final moments. But you're right. Whatever lies ahead will be a little less daunting with support. You can call me Shadowheart. Don't mistake blood for kinship. After everything you've been through, my name gives you pause. Please. That is none of your business. I suggest we concentrate on surviving. Very little. Supposedly, those monsters breed by planting their tadpoles in people's heads. Over time, the infected victim turns into a mind flare. I don't remember how long it takes, but we should hurry. Lead the way. You're alive. That's unexpected. Last I saw you, you were lying in a crucible's worth of blood. An intellect devourer nibbling at your ear. Glad to see my eyes deceive me. I'm Gail. Well met. The very same. A traumatizing experience, if an instructive one. Yes. The ocular penetration by an illithid tab pole, which will end with our souls being snuffed like strands of weave caught in dead magic. Not to mention, you're staring at me like a Rashimi at a blackboard. You're no wizard, are you? There's a gust of weave about you, but it's a mere breeze. I need a tempest. It'll have to wait. The primary need is a healer. I take it you recall the insertion of the parasite? Are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it'll turn us into mind flayers? A process known as ceramorphosis? It is to be avoided. I assume you're no accomplished healer, either. Powerful cleric, maybe? Hmm. Then we'll have to find one. And fast. You and I are in a whole lot of trouble. We need help. I'm not sure where we'll find it in this wilderness. How about we embark on the quest for a healer together? Most excellent. Then, without further ado, let's be off. Besides, looks like you keep some interesting company. A woman with shadows for eyes. Deep as the dark lake. Pleasure, madam. Is it indeed? We'll see. You're both twice as tall as me, but I'm half the bloody backbone! But we don't know what that thing even is. And what about the crypt? I'm telling you, it's a ship. And the crypt can wait. Mari and Barton have been trying to break in for days. Now we... Stop! Got ourselves competition already. That's our ship. Well, uh, in that case, come on, you lot. No point in getting killed. Second worm gets the cheese and all. Um, second mouse gets the cheese, no? Nobody's getting any damn cheese! Now move it! You're more cunning than you look. I thought we had a fight on our hands. Are you, Gibblebock? Everything all right out there? You sound a bit shaken, boss. Hang on while I find the key.
something just woke up down here. Let them come. The darkness can be to our advantage. Glacius! Harun! Rising from the dead just to protect some dusty baubles. Fools. Please, save your regrets. This place isn't worthy of them. Let's move. So he has spoken, and so thou standest before me, right as always. What a curious way to awaken. Now I have a question for thee. What is the worth of a single mortal's life? Curiosity. Nothing more. Wilt thou answer my question? So, I ask again. What is the worth of a single mortal life? I am sure thou believest as such. Very well. I am satisfied. We have met, and I know thy face. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. Zoran was right. Yellow is a toad, and twice as ugly. The thing's dangerous. Leave it for the goblins to kill. And if it escapes, how will you... Oh, a guest. Your skull pounds in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips don't move, yet you hear her voice. You again. Get rid of them. She's right. No one's safe if that thing goes loose. Not even us. Damaze! Enough. Lower the trap. Ready your blade. You've but one chance. Join me or die. No! You lying rat! The tadpole hasn't yet scrambled all your senses. Auspicious. But the longer we wait, the more it consumes. My people possess the cure for this infection. I must find a crash. You will join me. Lies. Just get rid of her. It is many things. A hatchery, a training grounds, a shelter. Githyanki protocol is clear. When infected with a geek tadpole, we must report to a caretaker for purification. You have made an ally from Kresh Kalir. Few know such fortune. Call me Lazel. Fool. No point in showing a mad dog kindness. It'll still bite you in the end. You've a sharp tongue, elf. 
Would that your mind proved its equal. Half elf. I suppose the finer details are lost on a creature like you. Come. The Horned Ones mentioned a camp. One there, this Zoru, has seen Githyanki. A crash must be near. We will ask this Zoru where he has seen my kin. Open the bloody gate! Nobody gets in! Sevlor's orders! That pack of goblins will be on us any second! What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gate, Sevlor, now! You let goblins hear? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! Open the gates! That was the last of them. Inside! All of you! More may follow! Open the gate! There are children here, you fool! We was running for our lives. You led them straight to us, and you let them take the druid too? Unbelievable! We lost him back at the ruins. Old place is crawling. He trusted you. Nobody forced him to go with us. He insisted. My God, you're a coward. The human's eye twitches. He's about to blow. And who the hell are you again? <clears throat> Should have done that a long time ago. Arrogant prick had it out for me from day one. No one leaves my people out cold. Too little, too late. He was right, though. Coming back to this hellhole was a mistake no amount of gold can put right. I'd rather face another round of goblins than stay in this pit. Let's check for healer, then move on. Whatever else is happening here isn't our concern. We won't help anyone if we turn into mind flayers. Let's move. Mm, regression. A cheap shot. I should have expected that. 
I'll survive a sore jaw. Particularly if it's rid the grove of Aradin. Whatever your business, I'd see to it quickly. The druids are forcing everyone out. This attack will only strengthen their resolve. There have been several attacks by different monsters. The druids blame us outsiders for drawing them here. Nobody's welcome anymore. They've started a ritual to cut the grove off from the world outside. We can't stay, but we'll be slaughtered if we leave. We're no fighters. I've tried. Korga, their new first druid, won't even see me. You, though? I know it's not your business, but she owes you for saving this place. Perhaps you could persuade her for more time to prepare, if nothing else. I think you should. Yes. No harm in trying the diplomatic route. We'd owe you a great debt. If we're forced to leave now, we won't make it to the city. You'll find the druids at the heart of the grove. Please, make them see sense before more lives are lost. Refugees, adventurers, no one in years and suddenly we're overwhelmed. Well met, and thank you for beating back those goblins. Most brave of you. Is there anything you need? Act fast if you do. The ritual will be complete before too long. I know it's drastic, but more monsters seem to terrorize this region every day. We druids will be safe. As for those that took refuge here, well... May Sylvanus guard them as they continue their travels. As I said, it's a drastic measure, but the survival of the Grove is paramount. There just aren't enough supplies to support everyone. I pray no Goblin Arrow has grazed you. Nettie could put you to rights. She should be with the others in the inner chambers, but I doubt she'll be taking on new patients. The Grove will be locked down soon. Just some bits and bobs I no longer need. Else, we can't just leave the kin. I'll not gamble our lives, our futures, on people who are as good as dead. We must leave for Baldur's Gate at once. Can we all just take a moment, please? What's the point in blazing spells if we don't bloody use them? We should stay. These people aren't fighters. We can help. Or yell louder. That's fine too. No, this place is a death trap. Let us leave, immediately. Or would you deny your brother here his chance at fortune in Baldur's Gate? Come on, sis. We're less of a target alone. We should leave. Oh, fine. Let's sneak away like God's damned cowards. But if something happens to these people, it's on us. I hope you know that. Go on. Give me a best shot. Not bad. Again. Hey, hey, keep focus. See how I used your own force against you? Ugh. I can't do it. <sighs> of course you can. It just takes time. I didn't become the Blade of Frontiers overnight. The man's smile bends downward, and his thoughts become yours. An unknown face commands your mind. Rust-red skin, gnarled horns. Chuck! He is infected. I'll be damned to the hells. You were on the ship. 
A strange sensation courses through you, and your companion's mind unfolds, secrets half revealed. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. The creature appears again. Red skin, twisting horns, and wings stretching wide behind it. Your minds part again, leaving your skull throbbing. Ouch! Careful you don't push the brain bugs too far. They'll leave you hurting. Keep it up, kid. If I had to guess, you took a bumpy ride on a Mind Flayer machine, same as me. And I've been having the strangest dreams. I haven't turned into a Mind Flayer just yet. But sooner or later, my luck will run out. I've been thinking I need a healer. And I reckon you've been thinking the same. I've been waiting for this druid house in to return. They say he's pretty powerful. He could probably help us. Problem is, the goblins have nabbed him. We better go find him before we start growing talons and tentacles. Excellent idea, but I have a condition. Look at these kids. They've no chance on the road, not while goblins infest it. I've got the grandest of plans. You and me, we kill the Goblin Horde's leaders. That should scatter the buggers. Frontier justice, I call that. What say you? I love your spirit, but you're full up. But when the time comes, just holler. The Blade of Frontiers will come calling. Splendid plan. Let's chat there. By Mordai's eyes, another one. My friend's blood not enough. Come to rip me open too. In Kresh Kalir, a formal greeting begins with a bow. Is this monster with you? You dare interrupt. Has the tadpole ravaged your senses? Lower. You saw another gift. Where? On the road to Baldur's Gate, N near the mountain pass. Saw us for we saw it. Jammed its blade through Yul's belly. Straight to the other side. No twisting. Kin must have been in a hurry. The map. Show me. Up. You can keep your innards. The locals prove compliant. A useful trait. I warned you, didn't I? You ought to reconsider keeping her around before she causes real trouble. Rough. Soon you will be vomiting blood and tearing apart your own flesh. When the tentacles sprout from your lips, will you still cry that I was rough? Then I needn't make it again. The teethling was clear. If there are a Githyanki west of here, that must be our objective. Purification cannot wait. Lazelle's eyes drift downward. Something is off. An 
infinitude. We are not friends. I will speak when it suits me, and not before. The Kresh holds the Zathisk. It will cleanse us of the Parasite. By covenant, I can say no more. You ain't gonna shoot me. Your hands are shaking. Put it down. She can't fight back. That's the point. Get out of the way! She didn't kill your brother, Arka. You're better than this. Shoot before you lose your nerve, Tiefling. If you ever had it to begin with. Looks like the Absolute sent me a protector. You gonna kill her too? <laughs> you, move! Smart choice. Here it comes, you little beast! Arca's thirst for revenge has been sated, and the goblin welcomed death with open arms. All's well with the world, one might argue. And yet, there's something unsettling about witnessing an execution, you know? No one will mourn this goblin, I suppose. Let's leave it at that. Believe it or not, but I witnessed a similar standoff back at the Yawning Portal. Of course, an establishment like that invites all sorts of outlandish entertainments. An inn in Waterdeep. Ooh, never a dull moment there. Adventurers come from all over Faerun to try their luck down the well. Leads into the Undermountain, you see. Full of death, danger, vast amounts of treasure. Hard to resist. Oh, a drow, a dragonborn, and a cleric of Cyric walk into a bar. Your standard fare. Maybe someone was cheating at cards. Maybe it was some weird lover's quarrel. In any case, out came the crossbow, and a hush fell over the entire room. I stood up and yelled, Shadow Dark Ale for everyone. The crowd cheered. The tension drained into five dozen tankards, and soon all was well again. In a place like the Yawning Portal, the most powerful magic is calling for a round of drinks. Mind you, all I did was call for ale, but you went and stood in front of that crossbow. Well, I'll drink to that. Let my daughter go right now! She's a thief, hell spawn, and you will wait for Corgus judgment. Now get back! Oh, let me through, Mradrasham, or I'll rip your damn throat out! Damn it! We could have taken those guards. Move back at once! It's forbidden to outsiders. Corga's orders. Keep back. Force my hand and I'll show you its claws. A moment, Giona. What? Oh. I understand. You. Apparently, Corga wants to see you. Go ahead. Please. I'm sorry. This is madness, Corga. She's just a... A what, Wrath? A thief? A poison? A threat? I will imprison the devil. And I will cast out every stranger. Girl? You mean Parasite? She eats our food, drinks our water, then steals our most holy idol in thanks. Wrath, lock her up. She remains here until the rite is complete. And keep still, devil. Tila is restless. Come, Korga. We took back the idol. Surely... Do it!
The devil sowed chaos. She remains until the rite is complete. Now, Wrath. No. What have you done? Atheus! Tila to me! Bury the remains. Continue the rite. And the parents? They're just outside. This outsider will take word once I've spoken to her. We must focus on the rite. Go on. Say it. You think I'm a monster? Accidents do not exist. There is only choice and consequence. The Devil's Spawn imperiled my brood. I bared my fangs to defend it. Choice. Consequence. Now, the idol of Sylvanus is returned, and the rite has resumed. We will seal the grove, free from harm, free of intruders. And mine perish if he stays. You showed great metal at the gate, the metal of a skilled sword for hire. I want you to provide your services to Zevlor. Offer to guide the Outlanders out of the grove. I'm sure they'll reward you well. They're to be gone before final prayer. If they are not, the Viper must strike. You will do more than speak. This tale ends but one way. With the Outlander rot cleansed, and the grove forever shrouded. Mercy on us, Sylvanus. Mercy. 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 Preventable. The sickening result of sickening beliefs. We let this happen. We let this snake replace our leader. Master Holson. Perhaps Goblin Court. Perhaps dead. He'd set Mistress Corga back in line. Hold her to task. Stop this damn ritual. More will die if the rite is finished. So many more, sent into a world gone mad. Would you? I would give anything to see Halsin return home. Sylvanus's blessing upon you, and my gratitude as well. Halsin is an elf with the presence of a bear. He left west with the adventurers. You won't mistake the first druid for anyone else. I see you. Just give me a moment. This medicatrix. There. It's up to her now. Life or death. Now, what was it you needed? You found her, but I still don't know what she can do for you. Why are you asking? A tadpole? A mind flare tadpole? I... Uh, I'll do what I can. Come, follow me. I might be able to help. We need to be quick. This way. This one had the same problem as you. Attacked us in the woods together with some goblins. Tadpole crawled out of his head soon after. Ha! <sighs> 
I'll do the best I can. I'm no Master Halson, mind. He'd have your tadpole out like that. Still, we have options. Give me your arm, please. You don't have to be here for this. I'm interested in the procedure, actually. Please, go ahead. There. Be careful. Your legs will probably give out first. I'm sorry. Maybe Master Halson could have plucked it from your head, but I can't. Without him here, the only treatment for an illicit tadpole is death. You're a risk to the people around you. I'm truly, truly sorry. For what it's worth, the poison is painless. It'll be like going to sleep. Please, try to relax. This doesn't have to be hard. I can't risk you turning. You'd kill us all. I won't. I can't. Same as the drow. But Master Halson said he'd turn eventually. Maybe. But it's one hell of a maybe. You could have days. Or seconds. Master Halson did say the drow's tadpole was dormant. Maybe yours is too. But first, this is a vial of wyvern poison. Swear to me you'll swallow it if you feel any symptoms. I hope it doesn't come to that, but thank you. Here, and here's the antidote. Do not mix those two up. I know you're not changing yet. And I've no idea why not. But we have to assume it's only a matter of time. You must understand, you are in grave danger. You have to find Master Hals. He might be your only chance. Master Halson's a renowned healer. He studied the Drow's tadpole for days and concluded he needed to find the source of the infection to understand its nature. We can only hope he succeeded in his mission. Otherwise, that vial's your only option. Ask the adventurers that abandoned him. They're the only ones who know what really happened out there. All I know is they went to the old temple of Saluna, and he didn't make it back. Remember what I said. Remember your oath. Poison? Never. I shall slit my own throat if it comes to that. Boundless, annoying optimism. I respect you for it. We must assume purification is at hand. Anything else is surrender. Let us make haste to a crash, then. Neither Nettie nor Halston holds the cure we seek. I can't believe she poisoned you! Tried to put you down like a dying dog without so much as a whisper of consent! Yes! Against her will, without rhyme or reason! How dare she snuff out life with as much thought as snuffing out a bloody candle! Yes. Yes, I am. It's just that. Had it been me, had it been, but you handled it, you handled it well. As for myself, 
I could quite do with a tumbler full of water-deep whiskey. Anyway, we live for the moment. How about we go find that chap Halsin, little Miss Poison Ivy mentioned. With a bit of luck, he has the means to offer us a cure rather than a coffin. Oh. Great talent or not, no druid can cleanse an embedded tadpole. Give no credence to such fantasy. Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. To all questions, the Kalir Library harbors answers. A gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking, and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge. Yet we still collect more, infinities upon infinities. I understand much beyond your comprehension. More to the point, I know the cure for our condition. It is imperative we locate a crash. You do well to observe more and question less. Yes, in great detail. It starts with a fever and memory loss. Then you start to hallucinate. Your hair falls out and you bleed from every orifice. Your bones will change form. Your jaw will split to allow room for four great tentacles. All skin will turn to gore and be shed to reveal new flesh underneath. Then you have ceased to exist, and a Mind Flayer is born. That shiver betrays your fear. Suppress it. It is useless. We must find my kind and be rid of the parasite. It's as simple as that. The first symptoms should have long since started, though. That is what puzzles me. Finally, some good fortune. Come morning, we know what to do. The sooner we find the druid house in, the better. I can't wait to get rid of this thing in my head. Head to Baldur's Gate. Someone's waiting for me. Let a girl have some secrets. Was there anything else? The same. These parasites are proving suspiciously benign. But suppose I turn. What would you do? It's hardly hypothetical. We're still in danger after all. Really? I'd just kill you. Anyway, get some rest. Try not to dream about tying me up. Go ahead. I'm listening. Let's see. I hail from Waterdeep, the City of Splendors. I'm a wizard of considerable and scholar of exceptional accomplishment. I have a cat, a library, and a weakness for a good glass of wine. And if the mood takes me, I'm known to try my hand at poetry. There. Certainly. That I have a great respect for privacy, for instance, especially my own. Try as you might to breach his inner thoughts, Gale swats your efforts away with infuriating ease. I have a very disciplined mind. Those tricks won't work on me. Please don't try that again unless I invite you to. Well met. Living legend in the flesh. Slayer of spectres, killer of kobolds. The pride of Baldur's Gate. <laughs> mm. If you'd heard the stories, you'd hardly doubt me. 
The proof is in the pumpkin. As I'm sure someone once said, if you don't know me as a hero already, then I'll have to prove myself one. Now, now, I always save the best stories for my closest friends and my cruelest enemies. Get to be one of those and I'll spill the whole jug. Hmm? You get that, right? Spill the whole jug? <laughs> huh. I guess I'll toss that one in the heap. Tiny groove spider across the eye's surface. It resembles a sending stone used to confer with distant contacts. <laughs> a, a what now? Goodness, but it's just a bit of rock. Nothing so special, I assure you. You watch and listen for signs of... Did you see those tiefling kids? Do you reckon our moping and muttering does them much good? They should be chasing frogs, climbing trees, not... training for battles they can't win. Those people look at me and they see a hero. Imagine how bad they feel if they were wrong. There's an old saying I just made up. To fell a dragon, you must chop off its head. These goblins are organized. It's no hamhead pulling the strings. We slither through their camp and off their leaders. Quick as crickets. We sniff out the gobble leaders and take their heads. And we free the druid housing while we're at it. If we want these brain bugs removed, he's our man. We're failing that, this gith crash sounds promising. If Lazel's telling us straight. I know, I know, that's a pretty big if. Ah, that's the spirit. Thought you was busy with the lads in Elson's Grove. You and me both. Gonna find the wizard who gave us the contract that got my people killed. Left out all the important bits, like beware, treasures beneath a pile of goblins. The kind that leaves half your crew dead. There's a wizard in Baldur's Gate that'll pay gobloads for a relic called the Night Song. But gold ain't any use if you're too cold to spend it. It's called the Night Song. It's supposed to be hidden under the temple where the goblins jumped us. I'd give you a map of the temple and wish you a happy funeral. But my mate Brian kept hold of it like his own sodger. Goblins made sure to the fat old chunk. All I've got's the contract. Can show you where we turn back if you feel like dying. As soon as he heard we had a contract to find that night song relic, he was more eager than a hound in heat. When the goblins jumped us, most of my crew scarpered, just like I taught them to. The old codger didn't. Yeah, and I'd do the same again. It weren't my responsibility. If you want to play the hero, go ask the goblins nicely. And maybe they'll give you whatever's left of him. Get over there! Surround him like! You've spotted us. Good. It's like they say. No fun in skewing a pig what doesn't know he's cooked. We got you surrounded. Here's how this goes. You take one step further, and we'll fill your front with arrows. Or you turn around, and your backside gets the same treatment. A strange symbol glows, marked on their flesh, and something within you stirs in response. it's best to save our strength for a real threat. Go on, then. 
Just keep your nose clean. Hey! Up here! Let me down! Keep chirping, birdie! <laughs> it's music to my... Well, I'll be... me old friend, Captain Failure. You! Sing for me, Roach. Tell me everything you know! <laughs> I know you ain't seeing much. <laughs> And there's an army of us, and just a couple of you. So you ain't the one gonna be asking questions. Your parasite burns in concert with Will's. Paralyzing rage, and a hunger for answers. Stand with me, mate. Carve him up, but keep him breathing. I've got some questions to ask, and I'll burn the answers from his shite-stained throat. Your man ain't tell ya Spike clobbered his noggin and nicked his eye. Oh, it's the one holding his head. Nice to see ya, Captain. Thought you'd burn with the other corpses. Gods damn you! You will point me to Spike, and then I will make you suffer! The gnome will survive. This cockroach comes first. <laughs> Look at that! The captain grew some bollocks! Bagger Kamara, there's pustulant thugs. Well, get on with it. You saved me, now you'll extort me. That's how this works, yes? Uh, my own fault, really. I should have dropped my pack and outrun those bastards. Alas. Take my pack, if you can find it. The only reason those goblins caught me was its weight. I'll travel lightly from now on. Ignorance is alive and well, it seems. Deep gnomes aren't restricted to the Underdark, you know. I've lived in Baldur's Gate for years. I'm in search of a friend. I fear he's in trouble. See this? I gave it to him years ago before I left home. I found it around the neck of a thug in the lower city. It was speckled with blood. My friend, nowhere to be found. But I still have hope. I'm heading to his home in the Underdark to discover what happened. I always help my friends. On that note, <clears throat> I bid thee farewell. If we should meet again, well, we will have met again. Damn it all to the hells. I wanted to knock him out, not kill him. He could lead me to Spike. Spike's the goblin that ripped my eye out. And I've got reason to think he's holed up in their camp. I'll fill in the rest later. Now let's get to that camp. It's time Spike paid for his crimes. 
dark secrets. Vengeful urges. Don't leave me in suspense just as you threaten to become interesting. You want the full measure of the blade? Take me to Spike. All will be laid bare. Shadowheart's attention is fixed on a damaged old statue. We... we should keep moving. Nothing. The trick of the light. But something tells me there might be a solution to some of our problems hiding in this wilderness. Let's just call it intuition. We should keep going. If I spot anything, I'll let you know. There's signs there was a conflict around here, some time ago, and different to what we've seen so far. Conflict needs opposing sides. Whoever they were, they must have had resources. A little investigating could turn up something of interest. Let's go. It's nothing. Even if it was something, I'm clearly not going to tell you, am I? Let's go. Look it, Claw. Sapper's here. Unless you've got another reason to be here. Feck shite. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Good for you, mate. Now get out of my sight before my wall grips you a new hole. You know, dumb as a rock, but world class at tearing the throats out of wee ones. She is. Rest of her litter's inside in the pens. Beautiful beasts. Be a shame if you came all this way without having a look. But I can't let you pass just like that. Celebrating a raid, we are. You'll need to wear our war colours. Nice to have this across the mug. Ought to do it. Go on. Don't skimp, neither. <laughs> I can't believe you did it, you stupid idiot. Go on, mate. Enjoy the festivities. You earned it. Depends who you are. We're celebrating a raid. No better time in camp than this. Get yourself a bit of fun before it dries up. Rip the guts out of Joaquin's rest, we did. Inns are good for gutting. Lads even captured some Duke. Worth celebrating, that is. With fragulous crown and with scepter abraid, draw Ragslin, short work of the innkeeper made. The inn burnt to ash, the captives were many, goblet kind had reduced them to cowering filfenny. So raise it, your goblets, and drain them with pride. Draw Ragslin, the true soul, had led you collide. <laughs> Who's that? Friend of yours? You up to something? Oh, certainly not. What are you doing? I'm busy here. 
You lied. To you? Never. Come, let's continue our ballad. <clears throat> draw Ragslin, draw Ragslin. Um, uh, um, uh, I am um, draw Ragslin. Um, um, come, choose, uh, draw Ragslin. Uh, um. ah, you broke him. Wait, wait. Draw Ragslin. We pray. We. Come on, pigeon. Back to your cage. Now, oh, look what you've done. The dead gods only know where these roaches stowed, Halsin. Keep your nose to the ground, and I reckon we'll get a whiff. Do not doubt the blade. The dragon's wink is no quicker. Saluna. As if mingling with a horde of goblins wasn't bad enough. Let's do what we have to do, then get out of here. Good. Saluna is a bad omen. Just look what's befallen her temple. Though, I'll grant it must have been impressive once, in all its profane glory. Until someone raised it. No matter. I'll breathe easier once we're clear of this place. Only that you're overthinking a simple deduction I made. Is your hearing failing you? Or your wits, perhaps? There's nothing more to say. Let's move. That the jingle of coin I hear? You've timed it well, my friend. Already turned quite the profit today, so I'm feeling generous. You joking? Goblins sell the best prisoners. Cheap, quiet, and eager to be elsewhere. Till this crowd converted and started sending their captives to Moonrise Towers, at least. No complaints, mind. I just sold enough smoke powder to cover the loss ten times over. Oh, dry your eyes, ill mater. It's me or a goblin cookpot. I know which I'd choose. Now, much obliged for the chat, but I'm here to trade. Greetings, child. I've met few aside from goblins here. You recognize the Scourge. This man is a follower of Leviata, goddess of pain. Ah, are you also here to assist with the prisoner? Your tastes must turn to the exotic if you would stop here by choice. I was invited to discuss pain and its intricacies. But even I find these goblins crude and, well, primitive. Pain without purpose is a terrible thing. Wouldn't you agree? You know the Maiden of Pain. How refreshing. But there is more to us than that. Yes, we worship her through pain, often our own, but it is an intimate and loving thing, one we offer up. If you would permit it, I can show you firsthand. By all means, let us see what his skilled hand might get up to. Pain is pain, dear one. It is above good and evil. <sighs> but very well. You are clearly too close-minded for the ways of Loviata. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should return to my own worship. Ah, oh, my friend, we can speak freely. 
I'm in no hurry to take my turn on that spit out front. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to unlock this cage? Curiosity, my friend. It didn't benefit the cat, but it's the foundation of my career. Though I admit I've hit something of an impasse. Please, unlock myself. Volothamp Gedar, realm-renowned author, author, and tastemaker at your service. Bless you, my friend. I'll wait nicely, but please don't tarry. Aha! Look at this! I'm quite saved! I guarantee the story of your daring rescue of my person will live on for eons. I'll write an anonymous account of your heroism, then. None will know your name, yet your doings will live on. Volothamp Gedan, realm-renowned author, author, and tastemaker at your service. We mustn't tarry, but I'd hate for our friendship to end here. Please, won't you meet me once we've both slipped the goblin yoke? Why, by design, my friend. How better to learn the ways of a people than to live among them? I dare say the experiment has proven most fruitful, too. I'd be happy to share my findings. Once we've found somewhere safe to parley. An invisibility potion, my friend. A bit less refined than your mendacious method, but by God, it'll do the trick. Smashing! Soon, my friend. Soon we can share the flagon of something liquid and a tale of daring do. I'll slip away when the coast is clear. See you soon, my friend. I simply can't wait to pick your brain! I'm only gonna make you hurt more. Where do they flee to, you stubborn rat? Uh, please! Stop! Spike? Enough! Look what the absolute drag did! It's my pussycat! The Blade of Frontiers! You come for a rematch? Can't wait to add the remaining eye to my collection. I'm not here for you. I'm here for the woman. I know you took her. Where is she? Where is Mizora? That Mizora lass, a friend of yours, Blade. Smells funny when you burn her. Screams real good, too. Tell you what, Pussycat. Make this rat squeal, and I'll take you right to her. You want me to... to torture him? Forget it. Then forget your precious lady, mate, and slink out of here! You ain't met the blades, friend. Dragged her out one of those pod things myself. I shackled her up, whipped her good, hung her to dry. No, please! You become one with Will. Shame grips him as he considers the tools at his disposal. Will pauses, then takes a hot poker and holds it against the man's leg. The prisoner howls, and the stench of charred flesh fills the room. I... You're right. Should've known you'd be soft. You're useless, pussycat. I'm not telling you shit. The gods be damned. Tell me. Not bloody likely. Don't.
please. Let me out. There's no reason for this. Thank you. Thank you so much. The lock clicks and opens. Thank you. I, I, I better go before they catch us. I should be able to make it to the grove on my own. They need to know they're in danger. Helsin, I, I don't know. He, he, he changed into a bear, but I lost sight of him. I don't know if he's still alive. Somewhere underneath the temple, it's hidden in a secret vault. Brian had instructions, but the goblins got him. They, they, they said they'd eat him. I, I have to go. I have to get out of here. Again! Again! Make it squeal again! It's staying right here. The beasts came in here with those robbers, killed Dink and Mince too. Boss is thinking of serving it to the walks. But first, three more stones. Make it nice and bloody. Yeah! Hit his head! I want to hear more noises! As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Yes, of course. Something stirs deep within you, hungry and alert. It's taking something you'll never get back. But, but I want to hear it squeal. One, that's a true soul you're talking to. Show some respect. S sorry, ma'am, I'll open the cage for you. The bear sizes you up, wary but not yet attacking. <laughs> Pardon the viscera. One should cherish all of nature's bounty, but... Goblin guts are quite far down the list. You aided a bear without knowing if it would savage you. <laughs> a true friend of nature. Or perhaps a lunatic. Either way, I owe thanks. I am the druid Halson. Indeed. Well, not the most opportune moment, but given the lengths you went to, I assume there's some urgency. Come on, then. What's the problem? Unless you'd rather wait for an audience of goblins. I see. It's spreading, then. You suffer from the very same blight I came here to investigate. I thought all the afflicted worked together. Clearly, I was wrong. No visible signs of seromorphosis. Just like the others. The good news is, you have time. The bad news, I don't know how much. I will do my best to help you, but before that, there's work to do. Blood to spill. I cannot allow these butchers to threaten my grove. The natural order must be protected. Rare is the beast that survives decapitation. Help me eliminate the Drow Minthara, the Hobgoblin Draw Ragslin, and that perversion of a priestess, Gut. They are the ones holding these parasites together. Remove them, and nature will cure itself.
or more difficult. I can only restrain my bear form so much. I won't be able to help but attack goblins. If I join you, we'll likely have to slaughter this entire place. You may want to use discretion when approaching the goblin leaders. May Sylvanus guide your hand. Focus on the leaders. That's all it will take to restore the balance here. Something's wrong. I feel... I feel... What the... Darkness, protect me. No! I'm fine. Forget it. Never you mind. It's nothing. Even if it was something, I'm clearly not going to tell you, am I? Let's go. We have yet to find Zoru. Or have you so quickly forgotten? He has seen my people. And where we find Githyanki, we will find their crash. I expect I am your first. Chuk. I suppose I am as alien to you as you are to me. I know of your kind, but I do not often encounter them. That large, fleshy nose of yours looks like a mistake. Decadent, then. Lacking in economy. Like so much of this world and its undisciplined people. I know you've got questions, but let me ask you one first. You ever want something so bad, you'd stop at nothing to get it? Then I reckon you'll understand. Spike and his goblin cronies torched the whole god's damned village. The bugger gouged out my eye and left us all to burn. I vowed to the hells and the heavens that I'd make him pay. So rose a woman from the town's ashes. She called herself Mizora. My soul shivered as soon as her lips touched my ears. She promised I'd have my revenge. Mizora would forge me into a hero. I'd have the power to slay my every enemy, save their every victim. All in exchange for my endless devotion. She only revealed her true form after I'd said yes. A Cambion. Half human, half devil. You were right about the fake eye. It's a sending stone. Mizora can call on me whenever she wishes. My soul became hers. In this life and beyond. The flames and fury of the Nine Hells themselves. She showed me how to conjure fire and to command beasts. The more I craved, the more she promised. Bulls of fire, festering clouds. I went from spoiled brat to savior. My way of avenging every blameless life taken. Slay enough monsters, save enough villages, and there could be... peace. I reckon you know the answer. There is no path to peace through the hells, though I searched long for it. I told Mizora I wanted out. We were still arguing when the Squiddy snatched us both. After the crash, goblins plucked her from her pod and... Well, I reckon you know the rest. I don't know what the drow want with Mizora, but she promised to break our bond if I save her. I free her, and she frees me. Mizora demanded a price I was unwilling to pay. One I won't speak of. Not now. And not here. The 
bargain is void if she's killed, near as I can tell. A nigh-impossible task, even for the Blade. If the Drow slayed her, they'd do me a great favor. Or so I think on the darkest days. But she still lives. They want something from her. Gods know what. Thank you. Your loyalty means more than the whole of the realm's riches. Doing the absolutes work. State your business now. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Right. Well. You ain't the first foreign type, I suppose. Gonna have to be a bit more specific, though, mate. Absolute's got a few favorites around here. You here to see Priestess Gut, Boss Ragslin, or the Drow? Seems we've pegged all three marks. Let the boss hunt begin. Enough gabbing, yous. You want Ragslin, Gut, or the Drow? Do you now? Might feel different once she puts a burning brand to ya. She's through the main doors. Just follow the smell of burnt goblin ass. <laughs> now here's somebody special. The Absolute has touched you, hasn't she? Priestess Gut needs to touch you, too. Hold out your arm so I can mark your flesh. A priestess, one of the leaders, no doubt about it. Let's make her squeal. What's that? Tell your friend to keep quiet, or he'll lose his good eye. Ready for the fire, are ya? Shows our devotion to the Absolute. These maggots see how strong we are with her guidance. Whole camp will be branded soon, and you should be too. You ready? Brace yourself. This'll sting. Hold still. As the pain muddles your thoughts, your minds become entangled. A familiar sensation. She too carries a parasite. Her faith floods into you, a tide of shuddering ecstasy. Her tadpole nestles within that mania, secure, hidden. I feel you in there, digging around. Works both ways. And I saw some weird shadows swimming around in your head just now. Maybe I can help with that. Us true souls gotta look out for one another. With the Absolute's will, I can fix anything. Let's deal with this in my chapel. It's private. Don't want this lot interfering with true soul business. Ready to clear your head? Whatever the Absolute tells me to. Don't worry, she loves you. I can tell. The Absolute will protect me. You don't stand a chance. Has not returned, and half of the intruders escaped your guards. 
Sorry, mistress. We mucked up. Until their sanctuary is found, I will take something precious from you. Every hour that passes. A trinket, a tongue, a limb. I ain't no use without my limbs. The lads will make the prisoner squeal soon enough. I swear! Silence now, creature. Or I will silence you forever. As she turns to you, her thoughts mingle with yours. A cold hand caressing your brain. A true soul in such a grotesque form. The Absolute has a place in her heart even for Dothia. Her heart is more generous than mine. Join my hunt, fairy, and obey me. Worshippers of a false god. Their existence is an insult to the Absolute's claim on this region. The thief, whimpering in our dungeon, tried to flee to their sanctuary. We will continue to remove parts of him until he tells us exactly where it is. He's been resilient, but he'll talk. We can't let them find the grove. End her now. Sooner than later, if I've got a say in it. Enough. Speak only to me while you are in my presence. The hunt must begin soon. Tell me what you know. The Absolute will reward us with such power if we find this place. You are a poor liar. I do not know why you are protecting them, and I do not care. You defy me! You defy the Absolute! Traitor! the blade. A monster like her deserves no better. Shugan al Shukok, o Tashokek Dor! I command you, corpse. Speak! Reveal truth to the Absolute! By Vlaketh's blade, a geich. Nothing. Must be reading it wrong. This is the big boss. Strike him down. The hobgoblin turns to you, and the parasite squirms in your skull. You taste the ale on his tongue, and the bile in his soul. If it isn't another true soul... He doesn't speak his next words, yet they still rattle your skull from within. You ever talk to a dead squid? Now's your chance. Found the squiddy near that tentacle ship. Absolute wants to know who killed it and ran off. And who better to tell us than the corpse? You choke on black smoke as the hobgoblin bellows his incantation. I command you, corpse. Speak and say sooth, Lucan Ok. Alcohol deck, Shulko Kank! The hideous corpse rises, tentacles writhing. Your heart seizes. What if the creature notes your presence at the crash site?
Raglan's mind reels, then calms. He will speak as you command. With Raglan's voice, you ask... What were you doing in Faerun? Raglan scowls, shocked by his own words, and a jolt shoots through your skull. The creature speaks in visions. A swarm of Githyanki dragon riders, silver blades held high. Control panels melting, flesh pods spilled open. Githamans! They know something. He is suspicious, confused by the question that fell from his lips. You proceed carefully. Why were the Gith chasing that ship? You see dark tunnels lit by noxious pools of brine. The darkness spreads through the earth. The sky splits open, and nautiloids pour out of a void that consumes the stars. What in the...? Suspicion floods Raxlin's mind. Your brain howls as you force a final query into his throat. Collapses, silent once more. No, no! I'm not done! Riddles, all of it! And nothing to show for the trouble but rotting squid meat! <sighs> that damned trow was right! Can't let her get all of that glory. Seems I ain't done with you. Report to the drow. Minthar is the name. Tell her you'll join her in attacking that camp. Say that again. Cause I know I didn't just hear you refuse the Absolute! Falling in line. Just what I like to see. Praise the Absolute. The ringleaders have to die. The very natural order of things is in danger. Thanks to them. Very well. My claws are yours. not right. Praise you, my friend. The Grove owes you a debt beyond measure. Killing's never my first choice, but those three were too dangerous to leave alive. Return to the Grove. I'll make my own way there. Once I've seen to some matters, then we can discuss your problem. With the leadership dead, no attack will be mounted on the Grove. I am in your debt, my friend. Speak to Wrath. He will reward you for your efforts. Soon. First, I must set matters to rights in the Grove. And you should celebrate your victory. After being dormant for so long, your infection is unlikely to produce new symptoms spontaneously. 
Tomorrow morning, we shall discuss what is to come. Rest, heal, celebrate if you wish, mourn if you must. Come morning, we shall discuss delivering you from your parasite. A scout just reported. The goblin's leadership has been decimated. We might escape this place yet. I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. It's not enough, but it's all we have. I... We have put our lives on hold long enough. Just a little longer now, thankfully. But perhaps we need not speak of farewells. We'll join your camp tonight to celebrate if you'll have us. My people are ready to leave when you are. Just give the word. You took it upon yourself to undertake the right of thorns. I ought to exile you from this place forever. Instead, I shall listen to the explanation that you owe me. I owe you nothing. Goblins swarmed us like roaches while you stumbled after the past. You chose to abandon us. I chose to protect us. Silence! The right has been ended. I will allow you to stay, but consider yourself a novice anew. You have forgotten the ways of the druids, our place in the natural order. You shall learn it all once again, right here. Backslide, and nature's fury will crush you. As you wish, Master Halcyon. A dreadful misdeed. One she will never live down. But the Grove still needs her passion. You will soon see why. We will talk more of it tomorrow. You've done it. You brought Halcyon back. Thank you. No, thanks is not enough. May Sylvanus bless you for all your days. I cannot imagine taking on a camp full of goblins was a simple task. As am I. The Grove will be whole again. And I promised you a reward, didn't I? Let me show you on your map where you can find the cash. Take this. You'll need it. I was certain your parasite had taken hold. I'm glad I was wrong. Thank you for saving Master Halson. For saving my home. For everything. I don't know if I can ever restore Sylvanus's peace to this place. But I'll have the chance. Thanks to you. As you approach the camp, you hear the sound of a celebration in full swing. I hope you'll pardon them. They meant to wait for you. But it's been some time since they've had cause to celebrate. I'm glad to see they haven't forgotten how. Will you join them? I suppose we could at that. I came out here to think, plan out our next steps. But you're right. The road will still be there in the morning. Come then. I hope you will forgive the pageantry, a custom we developed in Avernus. The sky there is utterly black. We took to filling it with stars of our own, to think of better nights in brighter places. Nights such as this one, with a light for every life you've saved. Oh, ah, yes. Volo also wished to show his appreciation. The glimmering glow of victory's light. Like storms in Shah's black skirt of night. 
cast shrines to which we all might pray. Our terror has been chased away. Say you've wept and begged and fled. A viper's nest, your only bed. You dream of when your babes might say, Our terror has been chased away. A band of strangers, strange and banded, arms to arms and sword in handed, did neither trust nor peace betray. Our terror has been chased away. This band, these strangers, stood and fought, and with their blood our futures bought, that we might live to see bright day. Our terror has been chased away. Our terror, yes, our pain and longing, God replaced with sweet belonging. And now a path by God's away. Our terror has been chased away. What secret in a hero's heart unlocks great valor's tell us start? A gift that gives us leave to say. Our terror has been chased away. We raise our glasses, hearts and souls, our very lives to those we owe. For though they could have left the fray, their honor was not chased away. This might be the wine talking, but I'm feeling inspired. Thinking of writing my next song about you. But I need an angle. Any ideas? Absolutely. With a foot in two worlds, you're the force joining both. You're going to love it. I have seen the Kithraki tear a screaming Niogi's legs from its belly to fashion into blades. Yet, they could not match your nerve today. It was enough to drive me to madness. A pity for us both you've turned your back on me so often. Vlakith demands of me no less. If only you'd earned the right to lay at my side. Come morning, you will wonder. You will wonder how my lips might have tasted. How my fingers on your skin might have felt. Oh, but do enjoy yourself this night. I intend to myself. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Tieflings. Never gave you all much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. Yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. That's more easily said by some than others. But nobody's here to debate right from wrong. I'd rather enjoy this wine on my own, so... Find your entertainment elsewhere? Thank you. I'm glad you sought me out. Amidst all this merriment, I wasn't sure we'd have a chance to speak this evening. I wasn't sure we'd have a chance to make merry. Just the two of us. It would. Actually, on second thought, I can't think of it entailing anything particularly enticing at all. Forgive me. I seem to be of two minds and two moods. We'll blame the wine and leave it at that. But before you go, I know there are many things about me that remain shrouded in mystery. You've been very patient with me, and I appreciate that. The time has come to paint you the true picture. I can only hope my tale will live up to your expectations. Tonight, of course, we celebrate. I won't keep you any longer. Tomorrow night, though, you're in for quite the bedtime story. There she is. The woman herself, let us raise a glass to freedom from tyranny. May we hew a clear path for the downtrodden to travel. To you, a legend in the making. And to the blade, another wrong righted, another page written. 
Your heart beats strong, friend. I'm proud to fight at your side. Now go off. Have your fun. I've got a tank of keeping me company. Uh -huh. There you are. Come now, settle in. If you are to repay what you owe, then there is no time to waste. Start at the beginning. Ye gods! Then let us add ignorance to your list of crimes. I am Volo Thampkedarm. Realm-renowned author, auteur, and tastemaker. My next piece was meant to be an expose on the local goblins and their absolute. They're quite dead now, as you know. Turned out to provide a single meaningful quote. You stole a story from me. Courtesy demands I get yours in return. First, you'll need a name. Something iconic, but not too much of a mouthful. We don't want to exclude the common folk, after all. I intend this tale to enrapture all. Grove Keeper? Are you a gardener? We aim to cultivate mystery, not shrubbery. No, your actions in the grove are most heroic, but I'm afraid this is a matter of style, not sentiment. Back to the reverie with you. I'll give the matter some thought in a small council. <laughs> I trust you celebrated most heartily. Curious. I wonder if the tadpole shares in your suffering the morning after. Well, perhaps we can make you feel better in more ways than one. I promise to help you with your infection. There's cause for hope, but it's... complicated. Some form of magic is arresting the Ceramorphosis process, while still granting you certain benefits. Your ability to read each other's thoughts, for instance. Magic such as this doesn't arise naturally. Someone is pulling the strings, someone of great power. If you wish to cure your infection, you must find them. These absolute wretches are rallied at Moonrise Towers, farther along the Chiontha. Whoever is behind this magic must be there. You must go there. The journey will be perilous, but it seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. I won't be held accountable just because you're naive enough to expect easy answers. Now, allow me to continue. To get to the towers, you'll need to pass through a terrible place. A cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings. Tormented. Dangerous souls. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or cutting through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel leading from the Temple of Saluna right down into the Underdark and beyond. The entrance is hidden somewhere in the Temple Ruins. Aradin and his lot thought they'd find fortune down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. But I think there's more. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorm managed to rally a whole army of Dark Justices in a secret stronghold deep in the Underdark. From there, his forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers in secret. But Ketherick was defeated before he could launch an attack from the Underdark. Ketherick took his secrets with him to the grave. You'd need a veritable underground city to conceal the force he mustered. Yet, none has ever been found. If you find it, I'll wager it'll reveal a route all the way to Moonrise Towers, bypassing the worst of the Shadow Curse. Anything is preferable to risking the Shadow Curse. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. 
I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. Unfinished business. It seems our fates have aligned. The Shadow Curse. It's an affront to nature and must be cleansed. I helped overthrow Ketherick Thorm and his Dark Justicias years ago, but I failed to prevent him from unleashing darkness across the region before he was defeated. I spent years researching the curse, trying to put an end to it. Nothing has worked. Yet, if I can join you and get close to Moonrise, perhaps I can lift this curse. Same as you may find a cure for your infection. Precisely. Then perhaps I could have done something about both the Shadow Curse and Ceramorphosis aberrations. But in my eagerness, I put far too much faith in the abilities of Aridin and his band. We didn't even get close. You'll need to pick it up where Aridin left off. Find the hidden entrance. It's somewhere in the Temple of Saluna. I've chosen a successor as First Druid, Francesca of the High Forest. A bird's already been dispatched to summon her. Precisely. Who indeed? You do not know, and neither do any of the others. The Grove needs to move beyond the mistakes of the past. What it needs is an unknown quantity. An outsider who can enforce the Oak Father's teachings without bias. This is why I chose Francesca. She will restore simplicity and purity to the Grove in my absence. Indeed, we've quite the journey ahead of us. Hurry, I've got one of those brain things cornered. There, in the grass. You can kill it, can't you, like you killed the others? I was hoping for a kind soul. Well, not to worry. Shh. Not a word. Let's try to keep that lovely neck of yours in one piece. Hmm? Now, I saw you on the ship, didn't I? Nod. Splendid. And now you're going to tell me exactly what you and those tentacled freaks did to me. Don't lie to me. I... Ah! Your mind twists. You're looking out of unfamiliar eyes, prowling dark, busy streets. You try to hold the memory, but it fades to the worm, the light, the fear. Uh, what was that? What's going on? Not one of them. They took you. Just the same as me. And to think, I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> A kindred spirit. My name's Astarian. I was in Baldur's Gate when those beasts snatched me. My, my. You've been busy. So, did you learn anything about these worms while wandering the ship? Turn us into... Ha! <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
Of course, it'll turn me into a monster. What else did I expect? Although, it hasn't happened yet. If we can find an expert, someone that can control these things, there might still be time. Well, yes, of course. But first things first. I was ready to go this alone. But maybe sticking with the herd isn't a bad idea. Safety in numbers, after all. And I hate to turn down an invitation. All right. Maybe I'll see you there. Good luck. Drop your weapons! I'll feed your innards to the ants before I do that, Istik. This is y your last chance! <laughs> Your last chance, Istik. Now burn! Stop wasting time, Beretha. You're not here to play with the locals. Of course, Kithrak. We merely sought to. No excuses. Question, kill, then move on. Find the weapon. Our queen watches us. Fail her at your peril. A red dragon. I envy its knight. Would that I rode such a steed. A crash must be near. Come, my kin await. The dragons serve Gith Yankee. I'll see it does you no harm. Follow me. We are close to the cure we seek. Ryder, my time is short. Lead me to... Shh, shh, shh. Such a familiar tone. Were I not merciful, I would slice the skin clean from your meat. Yet you are not bleeding. For I am nothing if not merciful. Your name, child. Lazel. Lazel. Proud. Regal, even. A geek vessel has fallen from the sky, Lazel. Thieves aboard have taken a weapon most precious. It is polyhedric in shape and inscripted with the sacred runes of our people. Take word to your crash. You are to join our search. Speak up, child. Affirm your mandate. This duty, Kithrak. I shall alert my caretaker with haste. The Kithrak nods, content with Lazel's answer. You serve your queen well, child. Take your slaves and hunt those who escaped the Gake ship. They must carry the weapon. Vlakith will see your faith rewarded in this plane and ours. To Danos! To the sky! I have followed protocol. He does not speak for Vlacketh. We carry the weapon he seeks. It must be powerful for a Kithrak to betray his own queen's children. He lies. I have devoted my life to my queen. I will be her chosen. It is my due. Search the bodies. We might find a way to the crash. 
and beware the skies. We are watched. Hold up! One more step and I'll put a bolt through your eye! No sudden movements or you're dead. You looking for me? Hurt or not, I won't miss. Lung, heart, arse, or eye. Take your pick. Tell me what you're doing here. Now. I'm good at reading people. There's a knack to it. And I'm only getting one word from you. Poor shit. Piss off, or show me what you're made of. You won't get any further this way, friend. Road's blocked up ahead. Rockfall in the ravine. Perfect spot for an ambush. I killed the biggest, ugliest one myself. My friends inside took care of the rest. If you want to go poking around in the cellar, be my guest. Plug your nose first, though. Corpse, half right to mush. Must have been down there a ten day or more. It was a toll house. By the time we arrived, it was more like a slaughterhouse. There's more monsters than coin moving down this road. There's a locked door down the hatch. Doesn't look like anyone's managed to get in. If there's any gold left, that's where it'll be. Need any supplies? We've less mouths to feed since the gnolls jumped us. Two. Both stalwarts of Tyr. Sworn to uphold justice. Luck had nothing to do with it. This is our calling, and Tyr is watching over us. At ease, friend. The Knolls hit us hard, but this place is still safe. It's under Tyr's protection. Yes, Paladin's in his service, sworn to bring justice to those who need it. But there are many in need, and few of us. This was our third battle in as many days. In truth, we could use some help. A devil is terrorizing the refugees on these roads. Tyr sent us to hunt her. Kill the fiend for us, and we'll reward you well. She has the form of a tiefling, with a single horn. But she's an infernal being, straight out of the Nine Hells. You recognize the description. The wounded tiefling you met by the river. She slaughtered countless refugees. Yesterday, she butchered an entire family. The mother had been pregnant. And you're lucky to be alive. If you see her again, bring me her head. Could have sworn I told you to piss off. Maybe I imagined it. Anyhow, piss off. <laughs> and you believe them? Those bastards are trying to feed you a crock of shit. Don't sweat it. The devils are tricky fuckers. They can't breathe without lying. Sure they were. And I'm Tiamat's left tit. I guess they told you I'd bite the heads off babies and paint myself in their blood. Truth's not quite so exciting. Come on over, and I'll tell you the whole story. I'm a fugitive. Escaped from the Hells. And those bastards are trying to take me back. Really? You're serious? 
as she winces, agony shoots through you, as if your bodies share the same wound. Then you're lost in visions of demonic armies as you tear through a landscape of fire and blood. The Blood War. You saw it from above as the Nautiloid passed through Avernus. This woman was on the front line. Stalker! What was that? You were inside my head. Yeah, with distinction. Now tell me what you just did before I make sure you can never do it again. That's what I thought. It was something inside of you. I felt it. One of those God's damned worms from the ship. I didn't think anyone else had survived. I boarded in Avernus. That ship was my way out. You're lucky I did. The place would have been crawling with cultists if I'd stuck around. And they'd have dragged us all back to Avernus. I was a prisoner, forced to fight in the Blood War. The eternal battle between bad and worse. Most souls in Avernus are just meat for the grinder, but not me. I held my own. More than. Turns out that I've got a knack for killing demons. <laughs> and I enjoy it. And that made me a valuable asset. Devils don't like to lose their assets. Back in the Blood War, my commander gave me what I needed to get the job done. I have fire running through my veins. I don't work for her anymore, so I'm back to relying on muscle and steel. I'll be just fine. They're not the kind of people you can run from. I need them dead. Fuck yes! <sighs> they cornered me in the toll house just up the hill. Doubt they've gone far after the beating I gave them. I come with you just to see them bleed, but I'm too busy bleeding myself. I'll be here when you're done. Ignis! Did you get the bastards? For now, but thank you. Her mind touches yours. Gratitude, warmth, and relief. Then, a light, sharper than the truest blade, brighter than a star. It fills you with awe, forcing you to your knees. And from within, a winged figure steps forward, graceful and terrible. She places her hand on your cheek and smiles as she carves her name across your chest. Kua ad vos non Petrica. Zariel, fallen lady, defiled celestial, ruler of Avernus. I was her prisoner and her champion. She tried to break me. The paladins you killed were acting on her orders. She'll send more, and worse. Oh, I'm counting on it. I'll be ready for her. And the first step is to go home, to Baldur's Gate. I've got a score to settle. And what is it doing to me exactly? Oh, barely felt a wriggle from it until you came along. 
Doesn't seem to have turned you into a mind flayer. Unless you've tucked your tentacles down your throat. I'll start worrying when it gives me reason to. Politicians. The fuckers who sent me to hell in the first place. My advice? Stay away from the city. When I catch up with them, the streets will run red. He of the unsleeping eyes. Grant me the might to carry this burden. Grant me the faith to face darkness without fear. He should never have been here in the first place. I'm the one that talked him into joining the fist. A massacre. Drow and goblins slaughtered the lot. Please, just leave me be. Keep pushing! The Duke could be inside! On count of three! One! Two! Yeva? What in the hell's happened? Goblins happened, Will! Now make yourself useful! Push, damn it! Push! Inside! Hurry! We don't have much time! Fresh air. At last. Your boldness is a blessing. I'm in your debt. Listen close. Drow have taken Grand Duke Alder Ravenguard. Westward, if my eyes and ears may be believed. I must report to the Flaming Fist Manip with haste. And you. I must ask again for your aid. Please. Rescue Ravenguard from his drow captors. The Council will reward you for your effort. May I trust you'll see it through? A tavern set alight. A Grand Duke trapped inside, and we did nothing. The Gauntlet always did think me a failure. Seems I've proven her right. You might say that. My father had connections, got me assigned to a fist outfit. Wasn't much of a fighter back then, just a thorn in their backsides. It wasn't a good fit. <laughs> Ancient history, I assure you. The gauntlet can hold a grudge longer than the Chionta. I can hardly hope for her forgiveness. Now I've left Joaquin's rest to burn. Nor can I claim to deserve it. You spot a man crouching between the shelves, just as he spots you. <sighs> Bugger! He freezes, waiting on your next word. Oh, let's say I'd rather not fight then. What's your business down here? Your timing ain't the best. I'm sure Zaris won't turn down a deal. Down you go, then. Entrance is hidden behind the wardrobe. Here's the key. Here Look at that. That's far enough. What's your business down here? Answer honestly, and maybe we'll kill you clean. Then your answer decides his fate, as well as your own. So make it good.
Trade with what? Your life was ours the moment you walked in here. But maybe I'll let you buy it back. I have a job needs doing. We've disarmed the traps. Come down. Mind the torches. We want those barrels to blow after we're gone. Not many can talk their way into a Zentarim outpost. I could use someone with your skills. Interested in a job? We're the finest mercenaries on the coast. We can provide you with anything. For a price. If you've got coin to spend and problems to solve, the Zen will relieve you of both. But today I'm offering work. Not looking for it. Some of our people are missing. More importantly, so is their cargo. Find them. Keep them alive if you can. Failing that, just bring that shipment back. Unopened. I'm offering hard coin, not idle answers. All you need to know is that I'm willing to pay a hideous sum to get it back. Unopened. Good. Backtrack along the road to the east and look for a wagon. Bodies, the usual. Time was. No one dared touch a caravan bearing our colors. Find whoever did this and remind them why. Something tore right through these people. They didn't stand a chance. Steady, we're not finished yet. The fire's the only thing holding them back. the gods that's over wish you'd been with us when the beasts attacked on the road i'll take the cargo back to zaris at the hideout drop by and see me when you can i owe you a drink since when does a mule know what it carries I don't think so. You sound rattled. Those gnolls put up quite a fight, I bet. We'll be taking your coin. What will you do with it? Good. No point in lugging this thing around when we know there's a motivated buyer. We've got more pressing matters to see to after all. Any luck finding my people? God damn it! What about the shipment? The Sharba's black bones, you did it! And still sealed. You're a god's damn wonder. Here's your coin. Actual professionals are rare. You ever want more work? Come and see me in the gate. Twilight is darker than expected. 
Moisture drips down your forehead. Pain shoots through your fingers. Your hands shake as they reach upward. Your forehead remains drenched, no matter how much you wipe. Can you feel it crawling through you? Tendrils squirming in your chest, gripping your heart, piercing your belly. Your bones popping, your flesh swelling. I can. I see it in you. I feel it in me. We are lost. I will be quick with my blade. First you, then the others, then myself. Your minds intertwine. You sense a touch of uncertainty, a touch of disgust. Your mind lurches, reeling suddenly as if bitten. Lazel's fear grips you, not fear of death but fear of insignificance. The great warrior Lazel, a failure to her kind. She will wield no silver sword, ride no red dragon, forever unknown to the great Lich Queen Vlacketh. I will not let the Geich take me. I will earn Vlacketh's honor. I will wait, but know this, I am watching. If the sickness does not pass come dawn, I will end us all. Speak, quickly. The Kithrak and his Sarth could not have been far from the crash. We comb the pass and beyond until we have found it. I would also see Moonrise Towers once I am cleansed. The Tadpole's commander resides there, if my suspicions hold true. Something the matter? All that's happened. You have a talent for understatement, you know that? Specifics, please. I suppose some would commend our actions. Goblins would have raised that whole place to nothing if it weren't for us. No excuse to rest on our laurels, though. We've still got our own problems to contend with. We go our separate ways, of course. What else? The ties that bind would be well and truly severed. We were brought together by circumstance. Besides, I have my own people in Baldur's Gate. And before you ask, no. I'm not telling you what I'm doing there, or who I'm meeting, or anything else. Find a healer. And the sooner, the better. Personally, I think Halson's advice about getting to Moonrise sounds like the most promising option. As for what he said about a dark, justicious stronghold in the Underdark, we should keep watch for it. Something tells me such a place could be of use to us. I'm not too hopeful that a gith crash will actually prove our salvation, but worth keeping in mind. Of course. We need every advantage we can grasp, and this dark, justicious stronghold sounds like an opportunity to me. We should look for it. Perhaps they're still down there somewhere. But if not, who knows what they might have left behind for us to claim. Shall worshippers are nothing if not resourceful, I hear. I... I don't know. Something to do with the tadpole, who's to say? Another mystery to add to the pile. We don't know how this works, not really. Maybe it varies a little, person to person. Don't worry. It won't matter once we find a cure. And if we don't find one, well, we'll be past our worries then. 
Very. It wanted to lash out at you. Luckily, I was there to stop it and save your life. Anything else? Ah! Good evening to you. I take it you're here to pick me up on that bedtime story you were promised. Marvellous. It's a story full of answers long overdue. It is the story of a man who fell in love with a goddess. I know, but a bit of narrative distance will make it so much easier in the telling. Indulge me. Thank you. Once upon a time, not quite that long ago, there lived a wizard in a tower. The wizard was what one might call a prodigy, who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it like a musician or a poet. Such was his skill that it earned him the attention of the mother of magic herself, the Lady of Mysteries, Mistra. Love. Perhaps it was not quite love, but you see, the wizard was but a very young man. It was most certainly love to him. Mistra showed him the secrets beneath the veils. The gossamer veils first, draped across the weave. The delicate veils next, draped across her body. Chosen one, she whispered, and she slipped them off completely. Yes, until one day, all too soon, the whispers stopped. The goddess spurned the mortal. The veils were drawn once more, and the wizard was left behind, heartbroken. Like so many of the heartbroken, he did something infinitely foolish. One has to think big if one seeks to win back a goddess. So the wizard thought big. In a word, yes, here goes. Once upon a time, very long ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower, a flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his story for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. He almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic unleashed that day was phenomenal, rolling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. A fragment of it was caught and sealed away in a book. No ordinary book, mind you. A tome of gateways that contained within it a bubble of astral plane. It was a fragment of primal weave locked out of time. Locked away from Mistra herself. What if, the silly wizard thought. What if after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? The answer was to try, and the outcome was to fail. Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in. Into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound, then suddenly opened. Inside, there are no pages. Only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws. It's unstoppable as it digs through you and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Of all things, magic. This netherese taint, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as it absorbs weave, it remains stable, to an extent. The moment it becomes unstable, however, it will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. It is my truth. 
finally revealed. It is this folly that led Mistra to abandon me completely. I can only hope that you won't abandon me as well. After all we've been through. Surely we can brave even this side by side. That is a great relief. Your apprehension is most warranted, but oh, a great relief this is indeed. It is an honor to call you a friend. Many challenges lie ahead, but in this moment, I believe nothing to be insurmountable. What do you say? Should we call it a night, or do you have questions for me? I'll be honest with you. I don't know. She was my muse still, the embodiment of magic. But the embodiment of love? Only if we ever meet again will I know. The orb was kept safe and inert in a pocket of astral planes suspended in time. If I can somehow manage to expel it from my body while in the astral plane, it will be rendered inert again. Alternatively, I could learn to control its chaotic magic. That is, to succeed where I failed before. But without Mistress' favor, I don't see how that may come to pass. Of course, there could be different answers as well. Faerun brims with more magic than any one wizard could fathom, let alone comprehend. Who knows what outlandish solutions may yet present themselves. Good night, then. And thank you. Talk to me. The blade comes from noble stock chief. Born in Baldur's Gate, bred in the upper city. And a steadfast dagger in my father's side. A different time, a different will. Oh, you got me all wrong. Hell, the man was my hero. He saw whatever shiny bauble he wanted and took it. And my fingers were every bit as sticky. Then I went thieving in the wrong shadows. Got myself into trouble. Father shipped me off to the Flaming Fist. Figured they'd teach me a few lessons. But I've learned a few, all right. Just not the ones he expected. You again. Oh, what's to tell? I'm a magistrate back in the city. It's all rather tedious. And clearly the tadpole. If we can't understand it, we'll never control it. A fine evening. A peaceful sky above, and nature's nighttime music all around. Wonderfully. If I'm honest, the grove was too comfortable for my tastes. I felt removed from nature. I'll miss my books. That I can find all the wisdom they contain out here, first hand. I studied one up close. Closer than most would care to be to those things. A drow attacked me and I defended myself. Afterwards, I was able to examine the tadpole that emerged. Hideous, but fascinating. Like nothing else in nature, I'm glad to say. Well, there's hardly anyone left to share the responsibility with. Few who witnessed the fall of Moonrise still draw breath. What Ketherick Thorm unleashed is not something that nature can undo by itself. I must do what I can. I studied the Shadow Curse for years, but to truly understand it and stop it, I must reach its source. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flayers, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> Finding is my job, my friend. If there's anything in the world worth knowing, I assure you, I do.
Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. As a matter of fact, I do. But why do you? That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, my dear sweet God! I mean, yes. I suppose I can. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. We meet again, as predicted. I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. A mending of the threads between life and death. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. Because it is my calling, there is little else to explain. A matter of coin. Then I shall wait here patiently until it is acquired. Chosen, let me come to you. I can help you. I've been searching for you. You're always so far away. But I'm already here. You frown in your sleep. There must be so much on your mind. His fingers are warm against your cheek, softer than expected. You think that you're sick, that you're dying. Are you afraid? You know. I think in your heart, you know. We wouldn't be here like this if it weren't destiny. Come now. I'll make you feel better. Let yourself go. Lean back. So eager, hungry, but... Something in your blood stirs and twists, recoiling like a wounded beast. It wants him gone. You're not ready. I will return when you are. But I do have a parting gift. Well, look at you. Fit as a fox and twice as eager. 
I feel it too. Not just renewed, but improved. New talents aching for release. Don't tell me. Someone came to you. An object of desire made you better, more than better. Same happened to me. Yeah, as vivid as a midsummer rose. Tell me all about it. Excited indeed. I still shiver at the memory. Your flesh shivers too, as your parasites resonate. Your mind's eye shows you not your dream, but wills. You hear the words once again. Let me come to you. I can help you. Yet it is a stranger who speaks them. A ravishing woman, clad in the thinnest of silks. An old lover. I truly believed it was her, till light of day broke. Teasing me with promises, with power, with release. Her words so sweet. Let yourself go. I couldn't say no. It's hard to resist when the hook pierces so deep. We may yet get a second chance, though. The visitor soon returns, if we're to believe its parting words. Until such a time, let's relish our good health. I'm in such fine fettle, I could slay a gold dragon. My blood is cleansed. My muscles still. I have been shown new might to tug foe and fiend into reach. Damn it all! Your gazes meet, and memories of last night's dream course through you. No. The dream. You succumb to temptation. Do you not yet understand? Your mind is not your own. First, the tadpole sickens you. Next, it entices you with a cure. If you do not see the ruse, you are already lost. Something tells me I know what you two were talking about. Both feeling better than you did last night, yes? Not even just that. I awoke with new... I don't know... powers. It was the same for you, wasn't it? The good health. The power. The dreams. I don't need to worm my way into your thoughts to know that. It's all over your face. So did I. I dreamt of someone I'm very attracted to. There was a promise of power. I had exactly the same dream when aboard the Mind Flayer ship. I rebuffed the advances, of course. If it happens again, try to resist. We can't take anything for granted, especially when it's to do with what's going on up here. <sighs> good morning. And it truly is, isn't it? A very, very good morning. The night brings counsel, so the saying goes. But last night had quite a bit more in store, wouldn't you agree? There's a glow about you, about everyone here. We all feel startlingly well. And yet there's a certain look in people's eyes. The far off distance of a haunting, which begs yet another question. Did you too have such puzzling dreams? Surely not the only adjective that springs to mind. What I saw surpassed the vivid. The voice was too true, the touch too tantalizing. I can tell you felt the same. It was an expert, this apparition. First the seduction, then the spurning, then that teasing souvenir. You're not ready. I will return when you are. That's what I was promised. We have some restless nights ahead of us. Having fun telling everyone about your naughty little dreams, are you? I had the same dream, of course. Very... Hmm. Enticing. You're a true soul. You can't die. Please, stay with us. An 
I don't think he's conscious. C can you hear us, Ed? You, not a step closer. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. An oil bear. Please, do you have any... Shut up, Andrik. Do you serve the Absolute? Wait. The injured man locks eyes with you. A familiar squirming churns in your head. Useless. Your minds intertwine. You see his siblings, Andrik and Brenna. New recruits. Yours to Shepard. Protect them. She is a true soul. Mind her. She will. She. She. Edwin! Ed! Please! He's with the Absolute now. You're. You're a true soul. Edwin, our brother, he was chosen. Like you. Do you have orders for us? We were reporting to Edwin. What? Are you... Are you testing us? The Absolute is our goddess. She's going to rip down the old world order, start a new one. Then we'll be the ones with the power. Well... You will firstly, true soul. You don't need me to explain that. A true soul, like you, has been chosen by the Absolute. You speak with her voice, and when the time comes, the true souls, you, will rule. That fellow had a tadpole in his head, and they consider him blessed? Chosen? What madness is this? The Absolute sent us here. We're looking for fugitives. Survivors from that ship that crashed farther west of here. We don't know what they look like, but anyone who survived that crash is bound to be injured. That's enough to get us started. The Absolute wants them found. At any cost. What? And just leave Ed. I suppose. I suppose he'd want us to go on. Find a way to honor his sacrifice. May the Absolute guide us. They spoke of the Absolute, same as that goblin Saza. Curious. Sounds like trouble. The man is dead, but something shifts beneath his features. A glistening tadpole emerges, slithering up past a sightless eyeball. The same as the creature behind your eye. It seems to curl upward in recognition, then shrinks back down, eager to escape. One squeeze should do it, but you stop short. How could you think of harming something so beautiful, so pure? The tadpole plops to the ground. Now is your chance to stomp it into the dirt. But it's too precious, too sweet, isn't it? You raise your heel and crush the parasite into the ground. Intense regret washes over you, churning your stomach.
looks like all those moon plates can be turned. Huh. This goes very far down. We'll have to go in to see the bottom. are you? Careful. If we can hear it, perhaps it can hear us. You are swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music. Through one creature sings many voices. The harmony of an entire collective. Sovereign. She has come. She is here. The choir fades. A single melody rises above the others, brassy and commanding. I am sovereign. You see a vision. Your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The sovereign is threatening you. State your purpose. You detect a distinct quiver in every note. These creatures have experienced recent tragedy. Fungal roots weave through your mind, seeking your true intent. Then the Sovereign drones a new melody, cautious but welcoming. Descend to me. Let us speak in flesh. The persistent music coaxes you forward. The Sovereign expects you. Seems the shrooms are letting in more people every day. You see a fella on his own on your way in. Dwarf. Balin's his name. Bald. Blue tunic. Dumb as a stick. Right. Never mind. My useless husband. Sent him for an errand. It's no surprise he's made a mess of it. Knock yourself out. But don't come begging for coin if you find him. You try to ransom him to me, you'll find yourself skint and stuck with a fat old lout. You recognize the name, Bibberbang, a mushroom that releases dangerous spores, highly flammable. I know that! Scroll! Escape! My bag, please! I've dropped it somewhere! Thank you, thank you. Look at that 
that? Got my useless old man back. I suppose that's your doing. His hands are empty as a whole. We'll have to send him back out soon enough. Please, Balin's got a job to do. We can leave when he's done it. Collecting noble stock. Valuable mushroom. We have a shop in Boulder's Gate. The locals go mad for it. Nearly nothing it can't cure. Blindness, poison, hair loss. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. But let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholar's brow tenses. His voice spills into your skull, the spores connecting mind to mind. Blurg, proud member of the Society of Brilliance at your service. <sighs> or perhaps not. Your mind is far more complex than the fungi. Understandable. We are small in number and rarely stay in one place for long. My colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. It's curious to find a surface dweller here. What has brought you down so deep? Truly remarkable. But why come to the Underdark, where they hold so much power? You were infected by an illithid tadpole. It's a miracle you're still intact. You must be worried sick, but have no fear. I have a friend who may be able to assist. Omelium! Perhaps this is important to learn. If my Zerkwood samples need constant attention. It is. This adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside her head, but she hasn't turned. No ceremony for you. That's impossible. That intrigue. Are you looking to have it extracted? I have broken free from the Elder Brain's yoke. I no longer serve the grand design. I ask that you refrain from violence, while I respect that your opinion of my kind may not change. A collective quest to eliminate the Gith and enslave all other humanoids, if that settles matters for the time being. Would you like a diagnosis? Open your mind to me. Let us see what lurks within. As Omelum's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size. Alive. Awake. Almost smug. This is most unusual. The incubation period should be complete, as should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. It appears to be in some form of stasis. No. It appears to be shielded from physical and magical influence. would involve severe cranial trauma. It is not ideal. The process would surely kill you. A nautiloid. Fascinating. I have 
never set foot on one myself. They were our warships during the greatest eras of the Mythic Empire. We ruled the entire astral plane from their decks. The design was lost when the Gith rebelled and ended our domain. Start taking notes. There may be a way to bypass that stasis. There are many alchemical substances that can influence the mind. Underdark, of course, although they are quite rare, and their discovery perilous. Hmm. I imagine Lenore would have them in her possession. She served Mistra as a cleric. The southwest, when I last saw her, although her tower does have a tendency to move. She is quite fond of her garden. Lenore has always been a lonely sort. Uh, nature was her only companion. I offered her the chance to join the society, but she refused. Her experiments on Sousa Bark took priority. May your travels be safe and swift. turns away to prepare the potion, lost in its own musings. You must drink the entire draught. I can make no promises as to its taste. It will lower the psionic defenses around the lava. If I cannot remove it, I may still be able to tell you more about its origin. Ormelum watches you with cautious intensity. It expects doubt. It expects fear. Only in that you may be a danger to yourself, 
What the potion may make you see or feel, I cannot determine. But, unless you are already a step from death, it will not kill you. The acidic liquid tightens your throat, burning on the way down. It's a vault of agony straight to your stomach. Not a drop left. Very good. As the potion influences your mind, you may find yourself acting irrationally. Try and stay focused. The world loses its edges, its finer boundaries. You are fluid, but trapped like a creature suspended in amber. Dark holes bite at the edges of your vision. But the void cannot draw you in. The tadpole spasms, seizes. It's fighting the potion even harder than you are. Fear pierces your mind like knives of ice. The parasite digs deeper, as if it means to hollow out your skull. A wave of psychic force batters your mind, cruel and calculating. You are nothing to it. You are small. The parasite swells with power, more power than you have ever felt before. It surges and twists, lashing out against that which would dare to intrude. The parasite in your mind quiets, pleased with itself. Omeluan, are you well? That lava is like nothing I have ever observed before. Its power is unsettling. Such an outcome was not in my calculations. There is more to this being than mere stasis. Indeed, although I may have another solution, albeit a temporary one, I possess a ring of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. It will not remove the lava, but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift, but in truth the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn? Because removal seemed preferable to negation. And I must admit, I was curious to study the tadpole myself. Fascinating topic indeed. What can you tell me? What a brilliant experience. To feel one step closer to my ancestors is a fine gift indeed. Yeah, it is yours. May it serve you as well as it has served me. That could mean any number of things. 
Of course, the lava remains. Be ever vigilant of its growth. Fleshwalker, tongue talker. Far you've come. Reach into memory. Tell me of home. It shivers in response to the deathly tomb and reveals its own home, a humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. Fleda destroyed my people. I am a sovereign with no circle. I do not belong here. I am not welcomed here. The Sovereign's thick fingers stroke the corpse at its feet. A droning melody greets you as the creature turns its gaze to you. Flesh Talker, I show you a memory. Watch and listen. A violent vision grips you. Dwegar, Dark Dwarves. Chopping myconid remains. They broke our peace. They killed our young. The sovereign's song slows to the pace of a dirge. It is still in mourning. We laid waste to many, but intruders remain. Lakewood. The Sovereign's song halts as it measures your worth. I sense your resolve. You will find Dwegar invaders near Lake's edge. Cleanse the rot. Destroy them. Dwegar invaders? We can manage that. Better than picking this fight, surely. Deep purples swirl into familiar shapes. Gnomes in mining gear, chased by Dwegar. The Dwegar seek a gnome. It is a guest. An illusion comes over you. A Dwegar choking on a cloud of gleaming dust. I can spare you no warrior. Too many were lost. But accept this gift. It will help you exterminate. The Sovereign gifts you one more vision. A wall of vines parting to reveal glow riches of magic and mind cleanse the rot and they are yours you do the circle of service we will await word it replies with an echoing screech and returns its gaze to the corpse unusual spores waft from the decaying flesh
remain in the Underdark, and I will follow. We cleanse the rot together. Too loud, Sunscom. Heard you stumbling. Can hear you blinking. Noise gets you eaten down here. Reckon I'll hush you before something hungry comes along. His fist grips an axe on his gnarled gray skin. You see the Absolute's brand. So, show me your brand then. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Huh. Burning those into just anyone now, are they? No harm. Every army needs grunts to run in and die first. Even the absolute. But spoil my hunt and you're dead. Told you, hunting. Slave ran away. Took Sergeant Thrin's boots. Got to kill the slave and fetch back the leather. Or the bosses in Moonrise will have Thrin's hide. Sergeant told me to. Besides, we're talking about a slave. A bleeding heart, are you? Reckon I just roast and eat it. Dead corner. Torment.
greets you with a harrowing elegy, cheerless as the new moon. The music shifts, still melancholic, but now streaked with hope. Do you hear a new harmony? Serenity. I name you Peace Bringer. Fragrant spores waft through the air. Your heart swells with bliss with your every breath. Freely you have given to us. Freely you may take. Follow the one. wobbles on the lake's murky waters. You! What are you doing on Gex Raft? Where's Gek? Who are you? As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. All right, all right. No reason to get your tongue in a twist. Well, come on. Let's get you to shore. You'll need to report to the sergeant. The rest of you, keep patrolling. Maybe you'll find us a way out. You continue forward in silence until the lights of a camp twinkle through the murk. You remember your capture and infection, your harrowing escape from hell, and the constant threat of becoming a mind flayer yourself. Your search for a healer brought you to a druid's grove and the refugees sheltering there. You remember their gratitude when you stood by them. Your reverie is interrupted by an underground fortress appearing in front of you. The symbol of the absolute is clear, even in the dark. You need answers. What game are the Mind Flayers playing? Is there even a cure? What are they doing at Moonrise Towers? And why are they looking for you? Amid this flurry of questions, you feel something else deep inside you. A hunger. A lust for blood. Soon. So, I want you to clean up all of this, okay? Gargoyle with a good curse over there. Explosive, explosive, and then uh, over the... Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is the end of the early access content. We are still under development behind me here, so you can't go through. But congratulations, very well done on getting here. And in the name of everybody at Larian Studios, I would like to thank you for supporting us in early access. Now, uh, we take community feedback very seriously, so I would like to invite you to go to our community forums or go to the review pages on the store where you bought the game and let us know what you thought of your experience so that we can learn from it and use it to improve hey, the game. Hey, quit your yapping. Let's get going. 
All right, so I gotta go back together with this man here, continue to develop the game, but see you soon, because we'll have much more content for you right. as we continue to integrate feedback and support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanna sing the song, right? Mm -hmm. All right, all right, let's do it. Row, row, row your boat gently down the lane.